Hey guys, so this is day two, even though I'm kind of lying, it was in reality a little bit of hours yesterday, a little bit of hours today. What I went through was creating a user journey with some really simple wireframes. This, again, I'm experimenting with this method. This, I use my, where is it? My iPad with Apple Pencil, which is good because then I can justify the stupid amount of money that I that I spent on it. So it lets me just draw these wireframes directly within FigJam, which I think is, I, what I like about this is that I can, I can create my more kind of formalized mapping for um, pages and, and scope functionality kind of bullets and that kind of thing and have these sort of low fidelity initial wireframes in the same document. So this is a mobile app. What basically I have here, and this is this is also not finished, but I thought I'll just record, hit record and get this get this out there. Um, done is better than perfect, perfect as, as I've heard many times. So basically, first time user opens the app, there's one main job for them to do if they've come to this app for the first time, and that is create a meal plan. So what I want to do is have this sort of like, almost like vertical number wheel that they can select how many meals that they want to be in this meal plan, what kind of cuisine that they feel like, cuisine, sorry, um, pronunciation off there, that they can choose from. So that's a multi-select, any dietary restrictions. In the API right now, I'm only allowed to pass through a single value here. So I can't do a multi-select for dietary restrictions. But I might be able to get around that. I probably just have to be a little bit clever, figure something out. But um, I think at least for initial version, um, one dietary restriction is fine. Um, then there's another screen. Oh, and by the way, this, so the navigation here, I'm imagining what, what my initial thoughts were that I could, once the users inputted their information, they could scroll right to get to the next page. So you kind of have this feeling of, this is like the previous slide or the previous card in the onboarding and this is the next one so the user kind of gets this feeling that they're sliding through i don't know whether i will actually go with that method i did some prototyping for how this would work which i'll show you in a minute and i think it might be a better user experience just to have a button to click confirm to go to the next step something a little bit more traditional but let's see and then this is just a simple slider. How much effort can you master? And then basically I've got a fork in the road. If, there, if this is the first time they're creating a meal plan, then, um, then they basically get to this view where they can TikTok style scroll up and through different recipes and they can just click like on the ones that they want to, to, uh, to add to their shortlist. And they can click on the card to kind of I want to see if I can do some kind of flipping around animation. Let's see, but then they can see more information like the full recipe, the ingredients and the steps. If they, yeah, once they like a, well, once they like several meals, um, basically there's a counter of how many meals they've kind of added to their meal plan up until that point, And they can click done to kind of get to this final confirm plan session that's if it's their first time um, going through this meal plan otherwise um, if the, this is if they're a returning user so if they have already created some recipes in the past if they already have an account then i also want this other option this other input to the search which is like how many meals do you want to be in the meal plan that you've already cooked in the past because i know at least when i'm feeling lazy i like to cook meals that i've already cooked before because i can kind of do them off the top of my head um, rather than having to like peruse a recipe on my phone and if, i don't know if anyone else has this problem but when i'm looking at a recipe on my phone my display turns off all the time you know it's only got like 30 seconds and then my phone locks and then i have to go into my settings and un and set it to like be like 30 minutes and then i forget and then the next day my screen drains because it's on all the time, etc., etc. Struggles, struggles. It's a tough, tough life out here. So at any, um, that's one other input that I would like to have. And then the final kind of steps within this create meal plan user flow is to, I'm thinking here, maybe they could swipe right to um, remove, just like if you're using like Gmail on your phone you, or you're on a tablet, you can swipe 
write to archive emails. So that kind of functionality here. I don't know if I'm getting too fancy here. I kind of want to try out some of this UX stuff. This is mainly rather the reason why I want to do this. I could also just have like a tick button and, or, or a cross button to remove that. That would be the simplest way to do this. And I might even do that as a first pass and then add some of this fancy schmancy UX afterwards. Um, but at any rate, this is where they can kind of finalize that meal plan. They might have added more meals into that shortlist than they're actually um, willing to go forward with. And then if they click finish, then they get the shopping list that they can just tick off items from. And um, this is where I've sort of stopped is I imagine for each meal plan, you got two tabs, you've got the plan itself where you can then um, see all of the recipes and open up those recipes, right, to see all the information. And um, you've got a shopping list view, which just is just one aggregated uh, list of all the ingredients that is, are needed to create all of those meals. So that's the create meal plan flow. Um, otherwise, if you open up the app and you've already got an account, then you're given, this is still a work in progress, but what I'm thinking is basically a page where the big call to action is to create a new plan. Otherwise, there's a list of all of the recipes that you've ever added to any of your plans because you might just want to use this app as like a repository for recipes you might not always be using a meal plan you might just sometimes want to quickly go into the app and just find a recipe that you you know you've you've cooked before um, otherwise you can toggle between recipe well rather no this will be this will be, um, plans so you can see the plans that you've created before and what I haven't mocked up here is going one layer deep and one layer deeper here if you click on this then you'll have another view where you will see all of the recipes belonging to that plan and, um, and also be able to see the shopping list for that plan this is the kind of where i've stopped off i need to i need to give it a little bit more a little bit more thought but where i kind of got distracted one could say is um with this ux of um sliding horizontally through these groups because what i didn't want was to just like your traditional horizontal scroll repeating group where if I as far as I drag my finger across the screen is how far the scroll works I want it to be more of a TikTok style where you just or, or actually I saw this even on Facebook marketplace the carousel view for images you just have to do a little quick swipe and you go from one image to the next automatically so the the viewport automatically centers on the next image. So I managed to get that working. That's what I spent my time on today. Um, so you, like this, so I can scroll a little bit to the left and it just toggles to the next one. And I've got a little bit of the, the periphery groups in view as well. So how I did this, I had to use a little custom CSS. There is a, the classify plugin that I use to add some custom CSS classes to to this group, which is a row and the groups within. And basically what that CSS does is it adds a few things to, to get this to work, but the critical one is the scroll snap uh, property. So that, that scroll snap is what gives you that kind of, you can flick your thumb and um, snap from one element in the scrollable row, or you can do it vertically as well. Um, so you can then snap to the next to the next item so that's what i spent my time on today interesting um so right now these are just groups within a row group but you can also get this working for a repeating group um which i thought i haven't seen this much this is really cool so this is a repeating group actually of entries so this would be really cool for like an image carousel so you can just uh, you can just let a user kind of scroll between the images obviously this works on mobile um, on desktop you'd probably want to have buttons to move between them um, on mobile this is a I think a really cool user experience so next steps for me I have to flesh out these wireframes a little bit more just get my head around the page architecture um, for returning users and then I'll probably just finalize how I imagine this this to work that that create a meal plan UX flow just just at a high level like am I going to have a click, clicking of a button to confirm um, and I'll probably just mock up something simple just to make sure that I'm happy with how that looks and then the next steps would be actually to, to mock up some or to create some UI once 
uh, sort of this plan is made, this mock-up is made, and I have some UI mocked up. The rest of the app, I think, is actually pretty simple, logic-wise. Um, the main, for, to me, the most most of the work is actually getting the UX um, really clean and tidy. So yeah, we'll get to that in hopefully um, the next few days. Thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed.